The Santa Monica West Coaster at Pacific Park is one of the most famous coasters in the world. While many people may not know it by name, there's a good chance you've seen it. This coaster made its way into Grand Theft Auto, and routinely uses the backdrop when introducing Los Angeles for a sporting event. Some famous coasters such as the Coney Island Cyclone absolutely live up to the hype. But is West Coaster as good as its fame suggests? Find out in this review. Santa Monica Pier opened in 1909. The pier was previously home to two wood coasters, but the amusement park closed in 1930. There was a stretch when the pier's future was in doubt, but in 1996, Pacific Park opened. This is a small two-acre amusement park, and from day one, the signature ride has been West Coaster, a family coaster built around the perimeter of the park. This was one of the first coasters built by Morgan Manufacturing. This Californian-based amusement ride company had been building amusement rides and trains since the mid-1980s, but they didn't enter the coaster market until the mid-1990s. West Coaster is one of the most over-engineered family coasters out there. If you've ridden any of the Morgan Hyper Coasters, West Coaster looks very similar. You have the same thick track, large supports, and bulky trains. Just this coaster is a fraction of the size. But I think this ride looks really good. I love how it interacts with the rest of the park. It adds so much energy seeing the drops above the midway, and the helix is wrapping around other rides. This coaster once had red and pink track, but was painted yellow in 2005. And that's the color scheme it has kept ever since. This coaster really pops against the usually blue and sunny SoCal skies. That's especially true when you're watching the coaster from the beach. Post-COVID, the ride also receives some theming. Leaning into the pier's location at the end of the famous Route 66, this ride was themed to cars, albeit lightly. The vehicles are now painted red and look like retro automobiles. Then the station is filled with license plates from all 50 states, which is a really nice touch. Pacific Park offers all-day wristbands or pay-per-ride options. If you go with the latter, each ride in this coaster will cost you $10, although you get two laps with each ride, so you're more or less paying $5 per lap, which is a lot more palatable. For much of this ride's life, it operated with a single five-car train. Each car is three rows of two, so the train can seat up to 30 riders. However, there was a short time when it operated with just a four-car train. I'm guessing that was maintenance related because the park is open daily, but I don't know for sure. I have only ridden this coaster with a five-car configuration. I've only visited Santa Monica Pier on weekends, so the pier has always had a good crowd, but I've never had to wait too long for West Coaster. Maybe it's because I go towards the end of the night. I believe a full queue only takes 20-ish minutes, but honestly, I usually have a different problem with this ride. It's often not busy enough. This ride is usually loaded front to back. I think the back row offers the best ride experience because you actually get some nice air time on the drops. But you usually cannot sit there unless you have a full train. So if you see an opportunity to get this row, make it a priority. The trains are identical to those on the Morgan Hyper Coasters. They have large fiberglass bodies. The seats are comfortable enough and then you're secured by a seatbelt and lap bar combination. What's notable about this lap bar is that even on the lowest setting, smaller riders will have quite a bit of clearance between their lap and the restraint. This is great for rides with airtime. Once you're dispatched, you roll out of the station and ascend the 55 foot or 17 meter tall lift hill. If you ride during the day, you get some stunning views of the ocean and beach. These views aren't quite as strong at night due to the lack of lighting, but you have the advantage of Pacific Park looking its best with all the lights on so the sight lines come down to personal preference. Do you want to maximize your view of nature or the amusement park? The coaster begins with a small dip and then you head into a 540 degree helix high above the ground. Now this helix is totally forceless, but it does continue that great view from the lift hill. It basically gives you a full bird's eye view in each direction as you spin about. This helix leads into the best sequence on the ride. You have the coaster's largest drop, followed by a bunny hill. Now that largest drop is just two stories tall, but you have some speed into it. So if you're in the back car, you get some unexpected airtime. It is some good sustained floater airtime, especially because of the aforementioned restraints. You barely have time to return to your seat before you cruise over that bunny hill. This gives everyone decent floater airtime, 
Honestly, this sequence rides similarly to a double down in the back because of how quickly the two airtime moments occur. You then rise upwards and enter another 540 degree downwards helix. But this one is even more exciting for two reasons. One, you're in closer proximity to the rides. You pass the ferris wheel and come darn close to the scrambler as you spiral above it. Two, this one has some solid speed. This rides a max speed of 35 miles per hour or 56 kilometers per hour, and I would not be surprised if you reach it at the helix's lowest point. While this maneuver has more speed than the first, it is similarly weak in the force department. It again is about the visuals. Now the exit of this element has a really sharp valley though that offers a rapid jolt of positive G's. You then twist upwards into the station, which offers a decent pop of airtime for those sitting towards the front. You then come to a stop. The operators then ask everyone who wants to stay on board. Most people choose to, especially because they paid a hefty price to ride anyway. But occasionally, someone will ask to be let off. You then get a second lap, which rides identically to the first one. West Coaster is just 1,300 feet or 400 meters of track, so that second lap really helps this coaster feel like a more complete experience. It's rare to get two laps on a coaster this scale, Especially considering how many people use the pay per ride option because it eats into their overall capacity. Usually this only happens on smaller kiddie and junior coasters. This ride's pacing isn't perfect as those helixes feel fairly tame, but if you place a high value on visuals, this may not be a major issue for you. But one thing everyone can agree upon is that this coaster is super smooth in any seat. It is a very comfortable experience. So what would I rate the famous Santa Monica West Coaster? I would give this ride a 7 out of 10. It's not the most thrilling coaster in the world, but I find the coaster satisfying start to finish. You get sweet visuals on both helixes. Then you also get some thrills on the drops midway through the ride. Especially if you're in the back car, you'll get some nice airtime there. Especially because it sneaks up on you after the ride's tame start. Add in the fact you get two laps for the price of one, and this is a solid experience. I know enthusiasts often joke about this ride being a kiddie coaster, but I genuinely like it. The ride is fun for all ages, it's approachable in scale, has a relatively low height requirement, and the few airtime pops are enough to whet my appetite. There are better coasters in Southern California, but if you ever find yourself at Santa Monica Pier, I do recommend taking a ride on it. Likewise, if you're an enthusiast in the area, I would say it's worth a trip if you can squeeze it in. So those are my thoughts on the Santa Monica West Coaster at Pacific Park. What are your thoughts on this coaster? Do you enjoy it? Or do you find it a lackluster experience, especially given how famous this attraction is? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you consider subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.